what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. Today we've got Hansel out here. So you know our focus is always the pro touring and resto mod cars, <laughs> heavy focus on muscle. But in the world of JDM, if it's got the word sky and line in it, I'm all in. <laughs> I really am. Like I love the line of skyline for cars sure, from the sure. early 70s all the way up to the R35. I love that car. And there's a handful of other ones, you know, there's certain RX-7s I love, the Mark IV Supras. There's certain course, JDM cars I really dig. And I asked you when you when you pulled in, is it a Hakoska? And you said yes, but I'm so used to seeing the two-door one that I didn't recognize it as that. So this is a real... Yeah, so this is a factory Skyline four-door sedan. So the what difference... Year? 73. 73, Yeah. Got it. So the difference is the chassis is like the base model. Got so it. this is a C10 version. Right? C10's yeah, the it's... designation on it? Correct, yep. You guys don't mix it up with the Chevy pickup <laughs> truck. <laughs> yeah, definitely, exactly, yeah, yeah. So, and that's one of the things that for me, it's like, I don't know how many of these you'll see around, especially here in the States. You yeah. Know? How long have you had the car for? We got it in 2020, so right before COVID. Obviously with that happening, the transition of us actually getting it in hand, we got it like mid-year, but got luckily it. we still got it. Is it as it was when you bought it, or have you done? <laughs> no, that, that would have been great, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was pretty bad. Um, it definitely had, uh, from Japan, 70s, it had rust. We went through a full restoration as far as like body panels, interior, engine, exterior parts, kind of went through the whole thing. Got it, okay. Yeah. Well, let's pop the hood and see yeah. what you're doing there. And uh... This is considered a short nose because the Skyline GTR version came with a six inline, so it's longer from so the So this front. is inline four. Exactly, yeah, so it's smaller. So Got we it. wouldn't be able to fit like an RB26, what usually people put in these cars, right? No way. So we went with the other option, which is another popular Nissan engine, which is the SR20. Uh, so sure. it's a turbo version, comes with like the S chassis cars. Is the SR20, is that the engine that was in the, what are they, the S15? The, correct, S14s, S14s, S 13s yeah. and 14s, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Is it just a stock one? Is it a build? Yeah, so we actually, when we started going through this whole process, it was hard finding in a good engine that was not, not necessarily running, but in good condition visually. The people at JDM California had this one and getting imported. So before we even saw it, we were like, all right, we'll take it. Um, so we didn't really know what extent it's, it was at. So yeah. before we decided to, oh, let's upgrade these parts, we just decided, let's just put it in stock. Let's see how it's running. So that's still originally the plan that we are gonna go with a turbo mount, you know, change up the manifold, redo the whole piping for the turbo, all that stuff. Cause even like the intercooler, like we had to retrofit the intercooler to sit where we were still tucking it behind everything else. We are gonna do a top turbo mount, you know, the whole intake manifold changes. The radiator, we actually kept the, the original one. Dude over there, uh, Tony knows a dude that was able to rework his magic and bring it back to life. Yeah. Yeah, it was In crazy. In case you guys don't remember who Tony is, we've shot with Tony before. We shot his really cool 2002. Love his Mercedes. The Mercedes ad, yeah. I love his Mercedes. <laughs> I mean, it's, you gotta be honest, dude. I mean, I think the guy does really, really great work. Oh, you amazing. Know, he's, yeah, he's, and I think he's definitely underrated, especially with like the quality of his work. I agree, know? man. So what kind of power, I'm curious, that does this make? Uh, we haven't really ran it through any crazy sort of dyno or, mm -hmm. you know, anything, so I, probably in the 300 area. Is that typically what these would yeah. be making? Mm -hmm. Okay. And especially that it's a light car. It's running the stock transmission from the SR20 into the drive shaft. We ended up getting like a custom fabricated drive shaft for it. Four speed, five speed? It's a five speed. When we originally got it, it was three on the tree. So we drove <laughs> it probably stock for like three months or something. And we're over here like shifting gears on, you know, and they had like a small like Prince motor. I don't remember what. Yeah. So there's been, a, so a lot's been done to this with plans yeah. to do a bunch more, it sounds like. Definitely, but definitely, yeah. Color wise, is this the original color to the car? Or no, is so the original color was silver. We weren't gonna do anything to it because I like the patina look, the rust. It was pretty, it wasn't too bad but it, it had visually rust, right? It was at that time that we also got invited to show the car at SEMA because we were going through the building phase and, uh, and my dude over at Toyo Tires, uh, Stan was like, dude, if it's finished, if it's something that's gonna be great, there, there was one exception that we needed to paint the car. It, it, he didn't wanna have like a patina rust kind of thing to it. And that's what we did. So the color is actually inspired from the R34 Millennium Jade. 
So it was like a limited edition color that Nissan had put on that R34. They actually just released one for the R35 as well. Really? Um, yeah, so it's the Millennium Jade color. This one, obviously, because it's hard to really replicate that color without, you know, we went off the code. Obviously, if you put it next to a, an actual Millennium Jade, there Looks might a be a different. little bit of difference. Yeah. Uh, but we love the finish. We I, love the color. It, I mean, I love that when you pulled up out yeah. here, like, it was the first thing that stood out to me is I really like the color choice yeah, on yeah, this yeah. car. It's very unique. Exactly. You know? Yeah, and that's what and that's that's kind of why I chose it. And I love it. And, you know, the finish came out great. And then wheels, these are tiny, right? What are they, yeah. 14? They're 14. Yeah, they they're 14s. are 14. Yeah, yeah. We went through three different wheel sets before we chose these. Not only the fitment, but the style, I felt like wasn't matching the color tones, you know? Yeah. And I wanted to keep it old school, go through like an old school GDM wheel. And that's exactly what we did. We ended up finding these from uh, Love 20B. They customize uh, old JDM wheels. And Very they had cool. these faces up available. They relipped them and perfect fit. I love the, the bronze goldish touch yeah. next to this yeah. green is really, a, it's slick, dude. Obviously, size-wise, it limits you on how big you can go brakes. Now, I suppose you don't need massive brakes on this car because it's such a light car. I'm assuming you've done an upgrade brake package for on For sure, here? so only for the front end. The rear still don't drum brakes. Really? It's still the old uh, setup, where how it came. The dudes over at Techno Toy Tuning, they have a full kit that was, I think, made for the 510, if I'm correct, but it also worked with the uh, Hako. And so that's few, all the suspension small, stuff. Yeah, a few small components that we were able to work with them to like measure out or whatever. But pretty much from the coilovers, I think the trail arms, the sway bar, like all those other little things. It has wheel wood, small, big brake kit, you know? Right, like as big as you can go yeah, on a 14 for the inch 14 wheel. Wheels, yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. Full whole swap was, it was done. That was actually one of the first upgrades we did before anything happened to it. Yeah. So suspension wise, you're pretty comfortable on how the car drives and rides yeah, and stuff. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, definitely, definitely. We still want to do something to the rear, but because again, it's like nobody makes parts for these cars. I think one of the options that someone suggested was like getting an old S13 rear end and, and swapping something yeah, out Yeah, welding, that. swapping, all that uh -huh. stuff. And then you said SEMA, so was this in the Tread Pass? At Correct, yeah, so it's it featured was. on the Tread Pass uh, 2021. Unfortunately, the our body guy that we had hired to do this job took longer than we expected within our time frame. And when we got the car, it was like 35 days out before SEMA. And so we still had to put- just had to cram. Yeah, we still had to put the, and then we got it in pieces. It was in the best scenario. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we ended up having to still put the whole engine in it, put all the exterior parts, all the interior parts together and made sure it was running, made sure all the parts were fitted correctly. And yeah, yeah, I got stuff. it. Yeah. I love all the carbon stuff on here. So there's a company out in Dubai that makes them. Carbon Signal, they're up in Dubai and they that's where we got pretty much all the carbon components out of. Um, one of our dudes that has a red skyline, we ended up getting the lip from him, but everything else came from them. And my thing is, I, I wanted to eliminate the chrome. You know, I knew we were doing something different. I didn't want to do like just full chrome everything because that's how they come, right? Great choice. And I like chrome on some things. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Like, sure. like an old car like that, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I don't mind it, but like, where you went with this, it would seem really out of place at yeah. this point. You know, it's like. Yeah, yeah. Sure enough, we ended up trying to find anything that we could that was carbon. We did. Yeah, it looks great. So same back here, I assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. The yep. light bezels, the bumper. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It all ties together really, really well. Obviously Skyline, but, yeah. <laughs> and then Lean is your company, right? Lean, yeah, so, Lean Customs. AKA Lean Customs. And that's exactly what we do, right? So the whole thing started with us making lapel pins for car enthusiasts, yeah. you know? That's exactly how we ended up kind of blowing up and everything that has led us to here right now. I love stories of, of people that, because most people aren't willing, in my opinion, aren't willing to risk it to go out and start a company, let alone the sleepless nights, the seven days a week. Like I know what it's like to start a business. For sure, you know what for I mean? sure. And Definitely people don't see that. No, it's when you get to the point you're at now where you're having success with your yeah. company. Oh man, you're so lucky. It's like, right. bro, <laughs> you weren't here when I didn't know how to pay the bills that yeah, month. Yeah, man, know? oh right? man. And that's exactly how it happened, man. I was a graphic designer. So my background has always been graphic design. So I've been a graphic artist for okay. over the last 10 years. Yeah. And I was working for a company, you know, doing uh, designs and whatnot, picking up freelance gigs. Let's do some car designs. A buddy of mine had like a cool Subaru. I'm like, yeah, let's, let's do some stickers or whatever and I remember my first design it was either you know spend a couple hundred dollars on ordering like 50 pins or pay the bill and I remember it was like that kind of debate with my fiance like do we try to 
start something or yeah. should we just say fuck it, just continue our lives? Yeah. She's like, nah, if, if you think it's something that's gonna work out, then just do it. You know, you're not gonna know until you try it. Sure enough, we're like, all right, fuck it. Ordered some pins and those pins sold within that month, bro. We wow. got like, you know, obviously the, the money came, right? And yeah. we're like, oh, this is something, like this is something that can happen. And sure enough, it just, then that's kind of how it just tumbled down. Every time we were making new pins, that money was coming in, going back into the brand. Yeah, good for you that you've, that you've created success with it, man. I think it's, yeah, thank I, you. Think, I think it's great, bro. How many gallons of gas does this thing hold? Uh, about 11. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not much. You probably got to be getting well over 20 miles to the gallon. I guess it depends uh, on how depends. you're driving. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah, probably like 20. I don't know that I've ever seen a four-door OG Skyline. That's awesome. Man. I just don't. I remember reading about it, but <laughs> this is beautiful in here, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, this is so cool. Like you even did a taller shifter in there, yeah, right? Yeah. So yeah, exactly. We went with the ISR shifter. Is totally it like a super it. short throw? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, of course it is. <laughs> and it's probably notchy as hell too. Yeah, it feels good. Slick, yeah, so man. luckily when we got the car, all the door panels, the way you see it, that's how it was. Dude. Everything is pretty much original, minus obviously the center console, the, the front seats. Steering and, wheel. And the steering wheel. Shifter, Every, yeah, right. and the shifter, right. Everything else, the dash, the gauges, the rear. That's the original? That's the original. God yeah. dang. Great seat choice, by the way. I dig those. They're they're a little tight, but they're definitely fit the car. Yeah, yeah. I've been more concerned with safety stuff the last year and a oh, half shit. since our big car <laughs> crash, right? And one of the things I've come to really love is is either a shoulder strap, right, yeah. or full harnesses. Yeah. And a bolstered seat, and then typically I like a tall back seat. But I mean, dude, this would look. Freaking weird it if your seat weird. was like eight inches on. taller yeah, than it is. It'd yeah, be almost exactly. touching the headliner of the car, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fortunately, we don't got much safety. Those seatbelts don't really work. <laughs> At least it makes you feel like you're yeah. safe. You know, you're pulling something across <laughs> your chest, right? <laughs> you know, one question I didn't ask about it yeah. is I'm always curious exhaust wise. Is this like a Tony custom thing? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah that's figured. exactly what it is. Uh, we were going to do a custom fabricated exhaust system for it. But just again, time-wise for the whole SEMA thing, uh, we didn't have uh, the time to send it out to another shop for them to, you know, take however long they were gonna take to do a custom full exhaust. So yeah. Tony's like, dude, we got the equipment here. I know the right make tools. It. Yeah, we'll, I'll make it. Yeah. Yep. So sure enough, and it's it's holding on strong. It sounds great. You know? Car sounds really good. One of my favorite things about the car space, you know, is when people customize, because when you yeah. customize, you make choices and your choices are unique to you. you of know? course, and yeah. I love the unique choices that get made. And ultimately at the end of the day, when somebody finishes up their car and they get to go roll it down the road and it's, yeah. Yeah. it's like one of the best feelings in the world. For sure, for you know? sure. It's awesome, man. Well, if there's nothing else we've left out detail wise, as far as the build and what's going on with the car, we should throw some cameras in and go for a little. Yeah, perfect. No, yeah, I, think, around the neighborhood. I think we're good, yeah. I think that guy amazing. does fantastic work. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And I know a lot of you guys aren't. You're not JDM guys, like <laughs> I'm not either. But you can't. But you really like the the unique element of it, the rarity of this car. For sure, for sure. Then Tony building it to where you can already tell in the couple seconds of driving, it's like all right, everything works right. Yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Suspension feels <laughs> solid. Brakes and, and feel good. And I think good. that was the the major key to obviously I think to him just building any car. I mean, he wants to make sure that it drives great. So yeah. now that we've been running it for at least a year strong, like now the next phase is gonna come oh. upgrade the engine. So yeah. I don't wanna be pushing okay. like crazy power, but I think. Yeah, because then you kill the reliability of it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, sure. bitch, and, and now you're exactly making a bunch of power out of a four cylinder, but you get for 500 what? miles out of yeah. it and then you're, yeah. you're rebuilding it again. Exactly, you know? it's, exactly. It's, it's Tony, man. Tony builds these things. He's super mild about what he's yeah. built. Shout out to Tony. Yeah, big time. favorite sounds a car makes too is that <laughs> that blow off dude i mean i'm already seeing the learning curve you know does it feel weird for you right now driving it feels nice but it's just different than what you know i'm used to driving 
for one, I'm used to driving primarily American muscle. Right, right. For some reason, I, I couldn't tell you what the reasoning is, but oftentimes what I notice with a lot of muscle cars is where guys set their clutch to bite, you're letting the pedal out for a while. I, I actually like a bite of your clutch like this when you're barely letting yeah. it out and it's already, you know, it's already get, getting you going. But you know too, like driving any car is always an adjustment. You for know? sure, it's, it's for a, sure. It's that brief learning curve. But I mean, dude, this thing just, the little bit I've driven it, it feels like I would, I'd be probably driving it all the time too, <laughs> you know? The tread pass, they curate the hell out of that. Oh There's yeah, some, it's amazing. Every man. car in there yeah. is badass, Correct. you know? We were fortunate enough to even be part of it, you know? Right. To have this like piece next to, uh, you know, I think that time it was the DeLorean Tesla, I think, or something like that. There was that. There was also uh, those slang 500 oh, guys those, that always yeah. bring out those Mercedes, Roadster Mercedes. The, yeah, yeah. It feels so responsive steering wise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like I've been in, I've been in cars that are, oh shit, that was just fifth, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah, it's so, the ratio is so <laughs> tight on your shifting, man. I like your car, brother. Thank you, thank you. Good job, Tony. Yeah, right? <laughs> that sound never gets old, does it? <laughs> no, Hear that blow off? Not at all. I think we went with an HKS blow off bulb too. So, and again, all those pieces had to be custom fabricated. So everything, Tony uh, put all that, all the piping for everything just because we had to relocate the intercooler, make sure that the, the manifold went into the intercooler without hitting anything. Right. So it's not just like bolt on some parts oh, and call it a day. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of room back there. Do you ever roll with four of you in here? Uh, it's usually three, me, my girl, and my son. Okay. Yeah, so or it's funny enough because my son's eight. You ask him, it's like, oh yeah, I have a car. It's, it's a Skyline because I told him when he's old enough to drive, this is his car. So, oh, he's loving it. Yeah, oh, he loves it. So, I'd be losing my mind if this was my first car. <laughs> no, you got to make him drive like a friggin' Hyundai or a Prius <laughs> or something. You got to give him something like that first. The first car? No, nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just thinking back it's to when jealousy, I was 16. Right? Like, I'm, fuck, yeah, oh, I'm yeah, jealous. Yeah. I'm really, yeah. it's killing me. <laughs> the name of the game in this oh, hobby, man. right? That's awesome. Because if it doesn't, yeah. you know, you should probably go find another friggin' hobby. <laughs> but not being able to see the yeah, rear view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just, <laughs> right-hand drive cars tweak my melon, man. But they're so fun to be in. All right, ready? Yeah, man. Yeah, brother. gets down <laughs> I mean really it, it's like so funny when you take these small light little cars you do like you use suspension work you give yeah. it more power they're really really fun I, mean, I think this is the epitome of what JDM's about yeah yeah definitely definitely
Well, that was just fun, man. Something very different, unique for the channel, unique to see this car in general. The way that it's built, Tony knocked it out of the park. The car drives great, sounds great, and it gets down. I mean, the car's definitely got power to have some fun and put a smile on your face. And in the end, that's what the hobby's about, in my opinion, is putting a smile on our faces when we roll down the road in our rides. So I hope you guys had fun and enjoyed this episode. Big thanks for always hanging and watching, and I will see you in the next one. All right, you guys, later.